Hello. If you place implants, and especially if you place implant abutments and crowns, this could be very helpful for you because the key, one of the keys with placement of implant abutments and crowns is to orient them correctly on the implant. So this is how to make your own seating jig if the laboratory is not fabricated a Duraline seating jig for you. So this is before and after. We're placing these three implants and implant crowns and abutments. Now I prefer a screw retained implant abutment and crown to a cemented crown if I can use it. The reason for that is if you place a screw retained implant abutment and crown the opening, the, there's just basically no space between the crown and the implant abutment and the implant. It's like eight microns. And so if you're cementing it, you've got to worry about the excess cement, cleaning that off. That can be a real cause of implant failure. So I find screw retained implant abutments and crowns are much more precise much less to worry about when you place them. And I, I use screw retained implant abutments and crowns probably 99% of the time. I can't remember the last time I used a cemented crown. So this is before the new patient photos. This is a pano before replacing an implant here, implant and abutment crown here, here, and here. So here they are, one, two, three, two on the max man mandible and one in the maxilla. So these healing abutments have been in place for three months since I placed the implants. Now I, some people place abutments on implants when they place the implants. I never do that. I'm not saying it's bad to do that, but I've seen s many implants loosen because somebody placed in a, 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 a provisional restoration on the implant at the time it was seated, and the patient bit down on it or could wiggle it. And to me, it's like a metal fence post in concrete. If you put that metal fence post in concrete and you wiggle it before the concrete sets, you're gonna lose the fence post. So I never place provisional restoration on an implant at the time I seat it. If it's in the aesthetic zone, I may place a removable provisional, but I don't place a, a fixed provisional at the time of implant placement, just because I want it to have three months to osseointegrate before any pr uh, pressure is placed on the implant. So I'm unscrewing the healing caps, and I like the long healing caps, and you remember if it's a, if I'm not extracting a tooth, if it's an edentulous area, I prefer not to reflect a flap, just to take the pilot drills soothe, through the soft tissue into the alveolar process. The reason for that is you can create an emergence profile with the healing abutment while the implant is osseointegrating. The patient doesn't have to deal with stitches and, and that type of thing. I'm not saying it's wrong to reflect the flap. I'm saying I prefer to go straight through the soft tissue with the pilot drill and the other drills and place the implant without reflecting a flap unless it's a, I'm extracting a tooth at the same time. And I, I don't place the implant at the same time if I've extracted a multi-rooted tooth. If it's a single rooted tooth and I can take the tooth straight out of the socket with the easy extract, then I prefer to place the implant at the time of tooth extraction. If it's a multi rooted tooth, I personally prefer to graft the socket, wait for the bone to heal for three months, and then come back and place the implant. I'd rather I don't place it at the same time I extract a multi rooted tooth, but that's just my opinion and the studies I've read and the success I've had, knock on wood, to my knowledge, I've never lost a root form implant, but I don't test mother nature. I let things heal before I place the implant if it's a multi-rooted tooth or place a provisional restoration on the implant. So you can see we've got nice emergence profiles with these long healing caps when I place the implant through the soft tissue. and use the drills through the soft tissue. I did not reflect flaps. 
These are the long healing caps. That's a tight squeeze on the bottom. Now this is how to create your own seating jig. Why would you want to create a seating jig? Well, when you're in the heat of battle, seating these restorations in the implants, it's you would think it'd be easy to stay oriented, but it's easy to get disoriented. So I want to do everything to make this a no-brainer. You can have your laboratory technician fabricate Duraline seating jigs. That's okay. But this works just as well, and it's so simple. And I was just looking around the optory on the, the tabletop back there, and I thought, what can I use to do this? And I thought, what if you put the tip of a cotton tip applicator in the hole and then used blue mousse polyvinyl siloxane to make the seating jig. You'll see this is just blue mousse fast set polyvinyl siloxane. Just squirt it on the adjacent teeth, kind of wet the model so it doesn't stick to them and just this cotton tip applicator stick keeps the hole open. Very simple and works beautifully. Always like trying something new. Just wondering if it works as well in the mouth as it does when I'm the way I'm thinking about it. And this worked beautifully. So you just want to cozy it up to that stick in the in the hole. It sets quickly. Just remove the stick. Now, just for super safety, if I jumped out of an airplane with a parachute and they said you can have one parachute or two, I'd just soon have two. Why not? So I put a magic marker dot on the seating jig and on and line it up with the crown and put a magic dot on a magic marker dot on that just so I know for sure it hadn't turned. You don't really have to do that, but I'm super safe. I don't want to have to even think about it. Now, what I've learned from using this for so long is you may want to cut the top part of the seating jig off so you, you don't have any of that flared part to keep your screwdriver from fitting into the hole. Now, this is noble grip. Since I've done implants this way with noble grip and torquing the uh, implant screw twice to 35 newton centimeters, 15 minutes apart, I've not had any implant abutment screws loosen. Knock on wood. There's an article in dentistrymasterclasses.com on double torquing implant screws. Now I've also added the noble grip, which is a pipe tightener. When you're screwing screws together or screwing things into pipes, this is a tightener. And so it just makes it super secure. Let's so see, here comes my seating jig and you want that to fit on the teeth adjacent to it you want that th you can see why now i cut the top of this off a little bit so i don't have any of this kind of like ice cream coming out of a machine flared up at the top you want to cut that off so it's flat so 35 newton centimeters tissue blanches just a little bit you can push that screw through the noble grip it's just so nice to put the implant, because sometimes, especially when you're working back in the mouth, it's just hard to tell that it's oriented exactly right. And so this takes all the guesswork out of it. So this is the tur first torque, see the tissues blanched. We're gonna torque it twice to 35 Newton centimeters, 15 minutes apart. So I'm just going by the studies. I didn't come up with the torquing thing. I came up with the noble grip, but I didn't come up with the double torque. Somebody else did a study on that. The screw settles a little bit, and if you'll torque it again, see I've cut the top of this off because I was having, it was a little too tall for my screwdriver to get to the screw. So I hope what you're seeing with these Dental Minute and Dentistry Master Classes videos is not just 
complex treatments, but also very practical, easy treatments that make your life easier and more predictable if you're doing these types of things. I like it. The easier, the better. The more predictable, the better. I don't think Terry is such a bad person, Melissa. No. So I've torqued it to 35 Newton centimeters, all of them. And then I come back 15 minutes later, at least 15 minutes later, and torque them again. Now, I don't know who came up with this, but you can read that article, and some genius figured out if you'll torque them 15 minutes apart, it settles just a little bit, and it, the torque is more stable. So I don't know if that's true or false. I know since I've been doing it twice and placing the noble grip, I have not had, knock on wood, any implant abutment crown screws come loose. I didn't have that many come loose before, but it's kind of a pain and you don't want to deal with it if you have to. So I, I think they're onto something here. And I think the noble grip is good also. So I'm placing the plumber's tape in the hole. I used to place cotton balls in the hole, but I like the plumber's tape better because it's easier to deal with. It packs in there well because you don't want any of your adhesive to get on the screw just in case you ever had to retrieve the screw. You had to unscrew it. You want to be able to get to it. Let me just cut to the chase and say, screw retained implant crowns and abutments are so much easier than cemented crown. If you've got to deal with a cemented crown, it's a pain and you know what. And so this is much easier from the get-go. Not having to remove that excess cement. Remember, rem uh, excess cement around a implant crown that's not been removed is one of the biggest causes of implant failure. So you can use either flowable or highly filled resin to fill the hole. I usually use highly filled resin, but sometimes I, mean, I usually use flowable, but sometimes I'll use highly filled resin. So I put the primer adhesive in the hole first cure it, blow it out, blow the excess away, then cure it, then put, put the flowable or highly filled resin in the hole on top of the plumber's tape. So I cured the primer adhesive, blew it off, cured the primer adhesive, now placing the flowable resin. Kind of roll that up like a hot dog, pack it in there. I really enjoy implants. I find them very satisfying. You know, if you go by the book and just don't rush Mother, Na Mother Nature, it's just fascinating to me that you can replace teeth predictably with implants. I'll polish the black dot off of the crown, which was used for orientation, just to be sure, triple sure, that it was oriented right, even with the polyvinyl siloxane seating jig, which it always is, but I just like to double check. Maybe I'm a little OCD about that. Polishing with this fine football diamond, checking the occlusion, don't want any eccentric contacts on the implant crowns or on the molar teeth. Polishing with a Shofu rubber wheel. Just checking the contacts with floss. Of course, you don't have to worry about removing any cement because there's no cement cementing the crown. It's screw retained. Screw retained is so much easier and more predictable than cement retained, in my opinion. Before and after. 
that's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time. Are you ready to take your dentistry practice to the highest level possible? Of course you are. Subscribe right now to DentistryMasterclasses.com where you will get Dr. Cupper's greatest work and best cases. Here's what you're going to get when you subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com. Incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos. You will get an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos and Dentistry Masterclasses, comprehensive cases for study and reference, before and after photos of Dr. Cupper's fantastic restored cases. Cases. And all of this, I repeat, all of this is just $40 a month. This is something you cannot pass up. Subscribe right now to DentistryMasterclasses.com.